Yo, yo. Yo, did you launch it already? No. I can launch. Oh, cool. Yeah, you're you're the uh I'm due today. Yeah. I don't understand how that happened. You even logged on before me. Makes no sense. And you need to give me host rights this time. <laughs> so weird. I almost couldn't make it. That's why I was trying to call you on Skype. Uh, sorry. I was on the phone for like last hour. Shia hit his head. Oh. And yeah. Uh, just give me. We're, we're live, by the way. Yeah. Just give me host. Yep. Shia hit his head. Oh. Okay. Host. Okay. Should we get now? Yep. Okay, cool. And I'm not Elon Ferdman. Let me un Elon Ferdman myself. It's White Monday, I see. Oh, I was wearing all sorts of colors. I was making videos today, so I was oh, cool. This is just the last shirt I ended up in. I see. I, see. <laughs> <laughs> I had a blue Monday, a black Monday, now we're in a white one Monday. Cool. It's all good, yeah. But uh I'm happy to be here because uh, I just got a call from the camp nurse at Shia's camp saying that he got hit or like some, somehow he banged his head and then he was complaining of a stomach thing. So I was literally like out the door and then she called me. She's like, well, it's been a miraculous recovery. Yeah. And go back in. I was like, so send him back in. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that all Kid, kids things. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you get to, uh, hold on. I'm trying to make the post and it's always does the audio, which makes it difficult. Uh, well, you get to disseminate, disseminate some of that right here right now. Oh man. I have, I have that. I have the whole thing to work with them this morning. Aliyah all of a sudden like clinged to my car seat on the way like she didn't want to get out of the car to go to camp so we have that whole thing now to to work through so uh it'll so be I, fun I, I have a question then so i say we're going right into it well hi for everybody who's here <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna get we're just gonna get into the mix like you guys i, I, feel, I feel like we've stopped taking any time to just jump in it's just like well we were like it we were like in midstream thought and then it went live so we're just gonna just keep going into it um <laughs> So it's so interesting. So what, what's in your space that all this is showing up? That's a really good question. Like if we, um, so for, for just context for people listening, like, so Elon's got all this stuff showing up with his kids today and it's like, okay, we can, we can look at it and deal with the kids. Like there's some external force here at work or we can look at like from a place of personal responsibility and sourcing everything that happens in our life, everything being true and valid and perfect that there's something in Elon's space that today there's been a shift in energy and that it's occurring around him. So I would just spin it a little bit differently. Sure. Um, and it's interesting cause it all kind of started with uh, Aaliyah this morning and I didn't feel good about how I handled the, the situation this morning, basically just to give you guys like catch you up on exactly what happened. So we have this uh, drop off line where we, you know, you go in your car and then the, they take the kids out of the car. So at no point did Aaliyah mention that she didn't want to go to camp or anything like that, which she's done here and there. And then, so we're in line and there's other cars obviously waiting to come. So I have two campers coming out of my car, which naturally takes more time. And she wouldn't get out to the point that she was like holding on <laughs> to my, to like the headrest of my car with her fingers that I had to like pry them off. So someone can pull her out of the car and she's like screaming and yelling. And there was just so many people waiting behind me. I was like, Aaliyah, you have to go. And so I called Fanny. I was like, did you, did Aaliyah ever say anything about not wanting to go to camp? Cause like, this is just, it came out of the blue. And she's like, yeah, actually last week she didn't want to go because, and then Fanny had a conversation with her, but this was while she was home, not in the car. Mm. And even Fanny at the time was like, you know, what you should have done was, kept her in the car, pulled into the parking lot, had a conversation with her, this and that. And so as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, yeah, 
it, it, it just, it felt bad. And so when you asked about what's in the space, I, you know, the lesson this morning was being soft and being empathetic and all that stuff. And instead I was just like super masculine and just like, go. Get out. Yeah. Not, not like get out, just like yeah, yeah. Handle, handle your business, you know? You're good. You're fine. Go. Well, there's and, also like they're waiting in line and shame about what it looks like and all, all that, that stuff. Like, came, but that was my stuff. That's what I mean. Yeah. And the opportunity in front of me was to be soft no matter what and like fuck everybody else. Like I could have figured out how to do that. Right. And so, so as soon as Fanny said that, I was like, oh, yeah. Because Aliyah is also very, very different from Shia. So anyway, when this nurse called, it, it, it's so funny because like this morning was practice for now. The nurse called literally five minutes before we were supposed to get on. Uh, so I was on a call. Fanny called me. I was on a call doing a pre-interview with somebody. And then I missed her call. And then she lets me know. And then the nurse calls me. And she's like, he needs to be picked up. And this is five minutes before we're supposed to have this call. So again, what? People waiting on me. Right. I need to be somewhere. Uh -huh. Right. All of this, and it's, it's exactly the same stuff is coming up. So interesting. And just because of what happened in the morning, like there was no question. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I can't believe this happened to me. My thought automatically went to like, oh, my poor baby, you know, I'm going to like go and love on him and like take care of him and blah, 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 blah. And what's interesting is that literally I'm about to run and go into the car and she calls again. She's like, he's made a miraculous recovery. So in in the world of what you're asking i couldn't even have imagined a better more perfect scenario to explain how our internal affects and impacts everyone around us mm -hmm. like me not having anything about it me not getting upset me not just coming at it from pure love and all that stuff and it's like look boom He's fine. It's almost like you can say that he felt that I loved and cared from him for him from here mm -hmm. without me having to go there such that he felt comforted and good enough to just go back out and play for whatever the next hour that he's got. That's awesome. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. Like so the what, whole what else do you see as uh, opportunities for new programming uh, in the future? Um, it, it's constant. The, the, the con for, I think for both of us, we're working on, on similar things, which is to be softer, um, to, for me, especially a lot more empathy, um, and things of that nature. Um, it's always like, like for me, life constantly shows up, I believe as opportunities to practice that. Mm hmm um, so I'm actually very excited to pick up Aaliyah and have that conversation with her and, um, apologize to her and, um, just let her know. I'm going to let her know flat out that I did not handle this morning properly, um, or the way that I would have wanted to handle this morning. And I'm going to explain to her why and what happened and like what got me triggered and why I did that. I think um, it'd be I think it'd be interesting to tell her that you were embarrassed, maybe if you were. That, that it's not embarrassed. It's it's. Uh, I was more concerned, and this sounds crazy as I'm saying it. I was more concerned with upsetting people behind me waiting in line than being there for my daughter. Than the well-being of your daughter, yeah. Which is crazy. Like mm -hmm. as I'm saying it, it's crazy, and. That's who won this in that particular instance on this particular morning, who won was the embarrassed person who's going to upset people that I don't even know behind me versus a father that would actually be there for his daughter in that soft, empathetic, beautiful way. Um, and yeah, I'm going to absolutely clean, clean that up with her. Super cool. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about that? About mm. new programming or anything else like that? Programming, I think. Um, the, well, the well and I still, I still want to go back to the original question. What do you feel has shifted? You said you had this really great weekend. Did you wake up with something this morning in particular? Because, like, for me, it sounds like, at least from, you know, an objective party, 
more objective party and somewhat subjective. Um, she probably has something that goes on at camp that she's not enjoying that she hasn't communicated. Well, she has, yeah. I just didn't know it. Oh, That's okay. why I was saying like I, the first call I made this morning was to Fanny to say, has this ever happened before? And what she's upset about at camp is they have, we're not clear, but in her communication, she's saying they have two hours of mandatory rest time. Okay. She doesn't nap. Oh. So for her, it's like dead time. And I think that's what's occurring. So I'm going to get real clear on what the issue actually is and then mm. figure out with her and her counselors how we can, because it's not like she needs to sit and stand up and sing and dance. You know, you can give her an art project totally. or cut or whatever, and she'll be just as excited. She just doesn't want to rest. And that's fine. Like she doesn't need to. She's, she hasn't been resting for a year plus. Um, mm. So that's, I didn't know that. And that's, that's what the actual issue is. And it'll be interesting from just a father perspective to have that conversation. Cause I know Fanny got to have it. Um, so to answer your other question about programming, I am realizing more and more day by day by day that like everything that occurs is an opportunity for you to see what that opportunity triggers. And then you now get to choose, is that the way I want to operate mm -hmm. going fo forward? Or is it not the way I want to operate going forward? Like, do I love the way I responded to that or not? And I have to tell you that if this happened a year ago, and it probably did with Aaliyah, like going to school and stuff like that, I had nothing about it. I was like, she's being a girl, right? being like a young girl who just you know, wants attention, this and that. Wow. I wouldn't even give it the time of day. Yeah, so, so interesting, like, right? And, 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 and ultimately programming into her the very thing that you don't even want to program into yourself, which is like, stop being a girl, don't feel that. I know. Um, going into like creating all sorts of issues around self-worth for her, where now it's like, babe, I want you to feel everything, you know, feel your value, feel your worth. And in this situation, I took that opportunity away from you. Yeah, and what, what I... You so know, in this particular instance, it's like, I wasn't being love. I wasn't being support and I fucking sure as hell wasn't being acceptance mm. with her in this time. And that's not the way I choose to operate mm -hmm. today. And it's interesting because like literally a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago when she was going to school, I remember she, she threw the tantrums and my approach was, you know, like you can go to school crying all you want. That's your choice. You know, you're going to school. That, that was kind of it. And now it's just so wildly different. Like the second I left, I just had this sinking, horrible feeling like, oh, that did not, you know, that interaction did not feel totally. good. And then the question I had, which is what I shared, I don't know, on one of these calls, I don't even know which one, was what part of me doesn't feel good right now? Mm. And that's kind of where this whole thing. And then I was like, okay, I need to call, you know, like the next action that arose in that internal dialogue was call Fanny and figure out, is there something that's occurring at camp that I maybe not be aware of? And that's when that happened. And then, you know, so like it all kind of, and out of the, you know, Fanny is just so amazing. And she's like, you know, this is how you could have handled this situation. And as soon as she said it, I was like, fuck. Yeah. That would have been so much. And that's why, you know, she's, she's a woman. And it's like that, that the thing is that comes to women so much more naturally than it does to us. Um, and yeah, I mean, she, well, she, it's, a, yeah. it's awesome. Look, you're, you're talking about a year transition, right? From how you would have operated a year ago to right now. And to be open to that type of feedback where it's not occurring like criticism or it's occurring like an opportunity and it's giving you uh, openings for new programming. I mean, that's a, massive victory even the fact that you're like you're you have this like strong deep desire to now want to go have that communication have that mm -hmm. conversation you know open up those channels and then ultimately teach her really that it's safe to be however you want to be i've been thinking you know it's so absurd as humanity what we've done to ourselves mm -hmm. we've standardized our days like you know you have these eight hour days so so like for me what i notice more and more is that like if i wake up in the morning and i'm like sluggish or stuff like that i mean yeah we have our schedule and stuff like that but like ultimately now I, I work when the energy is available for me to work because it's good work then. 
like when I feel like, so I kind of noticed I have like these pockets of energy throughout the day. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm gotten really good at starting to identify these pockets. And when the pockets not there, I stop making myself wrong for not wanting to do work done during those times. Cause those are times I used to sit down and be like, well, I have to get this thing done. And now I'm like, I'd rather be in the fucking pocket. Cause I find myself like I get these, uh, blocks of time where I'm just like, yes, like, yes, yes, yes to everything I'm doing. I'm excited and the energy behind it and all this stuff. And like, I'm much more creative. I like what the output way more. And I'm like, isn't it funny that we've created this system? Like you gotta wake up on a Monday where you're like, I feel like this Bleh. and then show up and be like, ah, you know, like in the middle of your work day, and it's so ridiculous because we do, we ebb and flow in our energy. It, it would be incredible if we were just like, you know what? I don't, do things. I don't create anything when I feel like shit because when I feel like shit, it's the opportunity to sit, quiet myself down and do the inner work about self-love because what's missing in that moment is not feeling like you're being taken care of. And then we go do all this other stuff in our life and avoid taking care of ourselves. And then like that opportunity passes because time does its thing, but it didn't pass. It just got repressed. And then it starts showing itself up in, in new ways and you're not learning and or growing from these experiences. And I, I think that's one of the gifts of having our own business. Uh, I'm at a point where I'm like, if I get on like, if I get on a coaching call when I'm in that energy, I can't even produce what I want to produce with that person because I can't be fully present. I'm dealing with my own stuff and whatever that, that comes with its own challenges at times. And yet like I, I, I do find myself when I get on coaching calls, oftentimes it actually pops me out because I yeah. get to like share that vulnerability, yeah. uh, which is such a beautiful thing about being um, in that relationship with somebody. Uh, and yet, like I'm at a point right now where like if things don't truly work, like I want to communicate even with my clients, like I'm not good right now, you know, for, cause like I just can't get that value right now. Um, so like, and I'm seeing that show up like in all my relationships. Um, so like for me, and then I kind of want to switch the subject a little bit with you, but like for me, uh, you know, one of the things I've seen, and I don't know that I've shared this year is that I've spent the last six, seven years, um, because at some point, like if you know Elon might a relationship, if you really know us, then like Elon was a very like verbose type of personality. He likes center of attention. And I was like always kind of in his shadow. And he was this guy that like everything kind of came easy to him. And I just didn't feel like I was good at anything. So like around 26, 27, when I really started um, working with people a lot, I found a lot of value. I'm like, so, suddenly I'm like, whoa, I kind of found my zone of genius. Like clearly I, I produce results with people and I started getting value in my relationships that way. But, but the value is being extracted from the relationship like towards me. And then over the last few years, that's, that's kind of shifted for me where like I now get my value from within. Like I don't need anybody to tell me what I can, who I am for my relationships, right? That's internally. Now yet, even though that internally has shifted, externally, I still contained and continued my relationship that way. Like honestly, maybe to the last three, four months. And suddenly I'm like, I don't want to do that. I actually see how that's created a disconnect for me and breakdown in communication. And then when I'm uh, dealing with stuff, like I feel like I have no one to go to. And it's because I've trained everyone around me that I'm the go-to guy that has shit. I don't want to say like handled because that was never my experience, but like you come to me when you need something, you know, and, and my friends would a lot, like people around me, that's what they come to me for. And then I would get into breakdown situations and I'm like, I don't even know who to go to. Mm -hmm. And and they created this disconnect in, in my ability to vulnerably share, like being a hot mess when, when I'm being a hot mess. Now all this like heartbreak around relationships has had me be like a fucking hot mess for, I don't know, six out of the last 16 months of my life where I just can't show up powerfully. So it's like, life is so interesting, right? Because it's like, oh, you want more vulnerability? I'm going to put you in breakdown in a situation where it's like, you don't got a fucking choice, dude. Yeah. Right. And it's like, you're either going to sit here and be like in your victim or you're going to step, you're going to step up and ask for the people around you for support. And I've had to like really learn how to ask for support during this period of time. And it's awesome. Like I love it and it's making my relationships deeper. It makes my friendship, my friends and family feel like they can support me and offer value. And I can see how I've been taking that away in my loving relationships. Like because I'm not vulnerable, people don't feel valuable. You know, people feel valuable when they can be there for you when you're vulnerable. So the same way you feel valuable for your friends when you get to show up. hundred percent. Right. So, but when, yeah, Think about the flip side of it, you're one of your biggest complaints, right? When you're, when you don't feel well is that you can't show up for people that way. 
And because of that, you beat yourself up because you're not getting to show up that way. And then you have people, you create a space where people can't show up that way no matter what, even when they feel good and empowered. Totally, totally. So it's so interesting because I would have never, that just never occurred to me before. Like I didn't see the relationship between those two things and suddenly it's like clear as day for me and I'm, I'm not committed to that anymore. So like, and that's how I was setting the foundation of every one of my relationships, you know, without, without even noticing that I was doing that. And, and that's so funny. It's like, you know, what the people in our life that the relationships we don't have, it's like, no, we fucking trained them that way, that that's how you interact with us. And it is really hard, you know, even for us to see outside of our programming. You're, you're stuck in your own fucking bubble and to get an objective view over your bubble is not an easy thing. And uh, another thing for me has been like, it, it, like pain is required for breakthrough. Like mm. I've, I've like put myself in painful experiences. I see how like my entire life I've like, I get, I used to get hurt. Remember I used to always kind of like get hurt all the time. Yeah. Mommy, I remember mom, even like before I went on a cross country road trip, she's like, you gotta yeah, get something out of your mind. And then that's kind of been like physical pain. And it's just kind of been part of my MO. Like I'm this like warrior, like bring it on motherfucker. And I've been that way about plant medicines. I've been a way about my personal work internally and, and every way. And suddenly I'm like, Oh, that's because I've, that's how I've derived vulnerability in my life. Like I have to experience pain to even experience vulnerability. And suddenly I'm like, there's this whole expansive world of vulnerability. And I've like honed it in on like one, one emotional state that you can possibly have. And I'm not committed to that anymore. Not even a little bit. So yeah. it's been like a, a big shift for me. Um, anything else you want to add about that? Yeah. Before we shift gears. Yeah. So interestingly, I'm listening to this, right. And, um, the story that I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have heard, um, about you know, what happened to me with the house and foreclosure and how that helped me create partnership for the first time, because I had a problem so big that I couldn't solve it anymore on my own. As I'm listening to you say this, I'm actually hearing it through that same filter. Mm -hmm. Like the world finally sent you an issue big enough where you can't show up like I have it together where you there's no other way of you showing up other than like I'm a hot sloppy mess and I fucking need your help and it was just like you 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 had the skills have the skills forever to always handle every situation on your own you've always known how you could talk yourself through it you could coach yourself through it you had whatever this is truly like the first time I mean even, you know, when dad is out there is like, why can't guy help himself? Like, <laughs> because it's so weird to him yeah, because, because everything else you've been able to like, you know, and it's truly, I mean, I, I've never seen you go through something like this and it just got you to the point where it's like, you're so at it that you have to try something new. Yeah. And this you and what you shared right now about what that's led to the depth and connection in these relationships, like the gift of that, right? Like what I say in the webinar is it was a kick in the nuts wrapped in a gift basket and in a gift box. Like this is your kick in the nuts wrapped in the gift box. Totally. And I'll just shift it a little bit with what happened for me. So this happened and I could have done that. I chose not to do that mm. because of everything that we're learning, uh, because of everything we learned. Same thing like with you and Aaliyah, right? Like that's a learned response now that you can even have the eyes to see that. And this kept coming back around. Like this is like round three, four of this, right? So it's like, I'll tell you what I've seen now is, you know, when January, when I was going through this kind of stuff, like that was pretty devastating for me, but I did, I got to a place and I was like, I'm just choosing my way out of this. Like I was so fucking done. And then at that point in time, I was like, cause, cause I was like quantum field, time doesn't mean shit. I'm like, there's a choice to be made here. I'm going to make that choice. And I did. And I started feeling freedom. However, you know what ended up happening? Six days later, I did a DMT experience and DMT completed it for me. It like removed all the programming for me, but you know what? It didn't, it wasn't something I went through. You didn't learn the lesson. I didn't complete it myself. Yeah. So, and, it, and isn't it so interesting? It's like, and they're like, oh, we sent you the thing. You circumvented it. You cheated. I cheated. I basically circumvented the experience. And they're like, so here you go again. And this right. time it's going to be like 
10 times worse than it was last time, which I couldn't have even imagined that anything could be worse than the way it was in January because I was, I was devastated in January. And it's funny because this time I wasn't devastated, but the depth of which I got to like feel it all was so much deeper and heavier and sadder than last time. And it was pervasive and it wouldn't go away. And like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and it's because I, I chose just the same. I was like, I'm just going to sit here and feel through whatever there is to fucking feel through as long as I need to feel through it. And I'm not going to do the mental exercise. Like people kept asking me questions. I'm like, I don't have answers for you because I'm not doing anything with logic here. Like I, it, this is not a logical experience I'm looking for. Like the logic I know, I know how to reframe it. I know how to do the all blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm -mm. just going to sit and we're going to feel all the things that I've never wanted to feel. Uh, and it's been, and it's still not done. Like I still go through different things all the time and I'll go through it for as long as I need to, even if that means the rest of my life, there's little stuff to feel here. Uh, I really feel the depth of that suddenly after about two months of that, which is, I don't know about you guys, but sitting at anything for two months when you're not getting any answers is not a pleasant experience. And then suddenly it was like the doors just opened and I just started getting a lot of light through and uh, I am really grateful for that. And I wouldn't change anything. And I, and I, and I see immediately the impact on all my relationships. I see it in my self-expression and how I want to connect and how I want to communicate and what I see is possible for me and for other people, even in my approach to coaching, even in my approach to our business right now, uh, my approach to myself when things aren't going the way that I think that they need to be going. And like in every area of my life, there's this new, operating system new way of being that's suddenly open and it's soft and it's adding fluidity and it's making me resist less and all these really beautiful things that honestly i don't even have articulation for quite yet and nor am i looking for it for the first yeah. time in my life it's so nice um to not have to know the answer you know and to be totally okay with that the answer will come however it needs to come when it needs to come uh, which has been wonderful. So uh, anything else about that? Because yeah, I, I, I just want to point out to everyone, because I know we were talking about, you know, something like personal and this and that. And th this is, you know, what Guy just shared, uh, what I just shared are examples of how your subconscious desires are manifested in the world, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, my subconscious and also very, very conscious desire is to be the best possible parent that I can be. It is something that I ask for on a constant basis. Like, show me how to be a better father. Show me how to be a better husband. Mm -hmm. Guess what the universe sends me? <laughs> a crying child clinging to the backseat of my car. Now, I didn't ask for a child screaming, clinging to the back of my car. I didn't. And I think anyone listening can absolutely get that what I asked for was an opportunity to be a better father. Or I asked to be a better father. What I got was an opportunity to be a better father. Now, I didn't achieve it in that moment. And I didn't beat myself up for it. I felt what I felt in the body. I didn't go into make myself wrong world. I didn't go into like, oh, I'm the worst dad in the world. How did I do that? Blah, blah, blah. I didn't go into that world. I felt as soon as it happens that something was off. And that was my first clue. Like that wasn't handled well, right? And then I trusted that and began my process. And now a mere, what is it? I'm going to pick her up at four. I dropped her off at nine. That's what, seven hours later we're going to have an unbelievably brilliant conversation that's going to create more connection and more love to my daughter than possibly ever and allow me to experience myself as what a better father so what are you in an argument with yeah when this stuff happens and it never shows up the way that you want it to show up no fucking shit guy for <laughs> a long time has asked to feel more he wanted to feel emotions. He wants connection, right? All of that stuff. Well, guess what the universe gave him? Mm. A fucking huge opportunity to do that. And we, as human beings, it's just, you go through life and stuff happens. And when it doesn't happen the way that you think it should look, or you wanted it to show up, you're in an argument with it. Instead of seeing it like, wow, 
What an unbelievable opportunity and gift for me to grow, to actually receive that which I asked for. Nothing shows up in this world without you asking for it to. You've asked for every single experience. Everything that you deem horrible and terrible, from sicknesses to deaths to getting laid off, you've asked for all of it. And if God, like he said a line at the end, and that's why it made me think of this, like, what a gift what you just received is, right? Like, mm. to be able to feel this way, to have this kind of connection, to know this, this about yourself, all that stuff. If six months ago, someone was like, all right, guy, so this is what you want, right? You want this. You want these kind of relationships. You want to feel this way. You want this. You've been like, yep, I want all that. That sounds fucking awesome. And they were like, all right. Here's what you need to go through. Yeah, here's what it looks like. Right? Like, you need to go through this amount of heartache. We're going to take this person that you love away from you. Ba, 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 ba. You've been like, eh, no. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want that. <laughs> You're like, give me what I know. Well, if you, knew the, if you knew the outcome before the circumstance happened, the impact wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. So, I just... You know, I'm, I'm encouraging you guys as you're listening to look where right now in your life are you mad or resigned or upset or tired of or whatever of a situation that you've deemed, I don't want this, right? And then flip it and go, okay, well, if I went through this, okay, and I came out on the other side of this. Who would I be? What would I be able to receive? How is this possibly aligned with things that I've asked for? You know, a lot of times, like we work with people who are in the entrepreneurial world and, you know, they'll lose a job or they'll get demoted, you know, something will happen. And they get like all worried and scared and this and that. And I'm like, dude, do that. Like, <laughs> Three, four months ago, you were telling me how much you fucking hated this job and how you want to pursue this career. Guess what the world gave you now? You know, in 2010, when Guy and I lost everything, I can't tell you how painful it was. I cried for three straight days when I left my office. I poured my heart and soul into that business. And through all of it, I knew that if, ha if that company hadn't been taken from me, we wouldn't be standing here doing what we're doing today. I was making a very good living and I would have continued to make an even way better living. And I wouldn't be doing what I was put on this earth to do. These, that golden handcuffs that I call, like, it, it, it's, it's debilitating. You know, it robs you of what your true soul's purpose is. And thank God that that happened. Mm -hmm. None of you would be here right now. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be having this conversation. The Tory Prime fucking sure as hell wouldn't be existing. So, yeah, it just... It's all perfect feedback. Yeah, it is. If you're, willing, if you're willing to receive feedback, just like if you're willing to receive feedback from your friends and family when they give it to you, like they really do see... You know, as long as they, it's not, uh, as long as their ego is not talking and it's uh, done with like malice, yeah. um, it's people just trying to give you perfect feedback about, and you know, who you really are. It's like when you have a breakthrough and you go tell your family, your family's like, yeah, we've been telling you that for 20 years. Exactly. It's not new to them, to you. It's a fucking revelation from, from the stars and it's like everybody else always sees it. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, anything else about that? Because no. I'm, I'm going to about face on this one. Yeah, yeah. I, by the way, I have to leave in about 15 minutes. All right, fine. We can do this quickly or quick enough. Um, journey of souls. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I've known about that book for, I don't even know, like eight years, at least nine or 10, possibly. I read uh, many lives, many masters. Yeah. Really long time ago. If anybody hasn't read either one of those books, I would actually read them in that order. Many lives, many masters. And then I would read journey of souls. Um, many lives, many masters is just a super quick subframe on it is, uh, Dr. Brian Weiss, who was like a really famous psychologist, very like logically minded. He brings this woman and does hypnotherapy with her and she starts regressing into past lives. And then he, uh, he quickly discovers that, um, 
the information that she's giving him is historically accurate, like to the T, and then um, stuff about she couldn't possibly know herself. And then uh, he always takes her into her death experience and she describes this uh, plane of existence between really like um, becoming a spirit and then like moving on. And, and there, there's these like masters there and they start having conversations um, with him and the masters and it's super profound. Uh, Journey of Souls, in contrast, is um, it's also regression therapy. I think now it's more common, but I think many lives, many masters made it common. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if that's true actually. Um, but this one's like multiple case studies, and he just keeps taking you through different case studies and experiences that he's had with people, and how all of them like reflect the same type of experience, which is just amazing. Uh, but here's what I want to say about it. You know when you go see Pam here in San Diego? Yeah. You know how you feel when you leave at the Oracle? Yeah, but you know how you feel internally? Like, I don't know what your experience is. So Pam's this woman that does like numerology and astrology out here. I personally think that there's something way more mystical happening in there because there seems to be a collapse of the continuum and space and time when you're with her. But um, the way I feel when I walk out of there is like an alignment. Like there's clarity and I'm sh and very sure of I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be like that I'm on my path. So like, duh, of course, like where else could I be? Cause the way that it's written and the way that I am in that exact moment, I'm like, it's fucking written like yeah. here. It, I don't fucking know how that's possible, but it is. And here I am doing nothing that it says I'm supposed to be doing at this period of time in my life. Yeah. Um, so when I read journey of souls uh, or listen to it, I should say, and it's great to listen because it's a conversation. So it's like yeah. fun to hear like the R rated versus like reading the conversation. Um, I feel the same way. It makes me feel so on point on my path. Like, I don't know that any book I've read in quite a while, other than like Surrender Experiment, I think kind of gives you that experience. It like, it's like an activation for an alignment. Yeah. And it's so fucking beautiful. Like, I almost want to like, cons like at least once a week or something, even after I complete it, just like keep listening to it and being in the conversation because it's like when you start getting they describe the game i guess you know in a way of the game of life and like why we're here and then what the purpose is over there and what that whole world is about and it's just so freaking beautiful and so perfect and it also makes me feel like i'm kicking ass this lifetime like I'm, like, like I'm really doing my soul's work this time like not just fucking around and putzing it and you started early and i started early and it's like i could just feel my my guide up there like proud of me <laughs> like oh good he's finally listening this lifetime i don't have to throw a baseball bat at his face um, or, or technically maybe he's still throwing if he she whatever is still throwing a baseball bat at my face uh which is what's happening now, but I feel like I'm listening this lifetime and I'm looking for those lessons and it makes me just like proud of my experience this time. Um, yeah. So it's just made me feel really, really, really good. Um, and I love books like that. And if anybody has any other books that have like brought stuff like that into your experience, it's such an activation reading like Gene Keys too. you read it and you're like, damn. Yeah. So I, I, the, the two that popped up in my mind as soon as you spoke about, well, three, Surrender experiment, 100%. It, it changes the way you live your life. Um, all the conversation with God books, mm. especially the last one, like Awaken Your Species, mm. was just that, that was like a download. And then the last one, uh, which is interesting because it's different and I had the same experience, was the um, Celestine Prophecy. When's the last time you read that one? Oh, what, like ages and ages. And I think ages. that was my first. I think that was my first soiree with spiritual books with Celestine. I, I think so too. Yeah. I, I I distinctly remember. I was actually traveling to Belize. I started reading it on the plane going to Belize. We ended up going to ruins on that trip. Mm -hmm. It was like the whole thing for me. I but it, honestly, it was just it was a guy going on this journey. It's an awesome book. Um, that to me was was a, a huge awakening moment. Me too. Yeah, I remember that also. Yeah, so yeah, that's like, it. I mean, I, I, I just wanted to share because it's been giving me like such a positive, like vibrational feeling in my body this last like week and a half that I've been going through it. Um, there's just something so beautiful about that interconnectedness. I think DMT also, that's like one of the main reasons I, I would say to take that kind of medicine. It just gives you the view from beyond with a um, 
DMT is a no mind experience. I've never had a no mind experience in my whole life. Even deep meditation work, ayahuasca, you're still there. You're having thoughts. Uh, DMT doesn't even give you the opportunity to have thoughts. You're like in this pure being state. And that's a really unique thing uh, because I imagine spirit is like that pure being state too. Um, so it just gives you that like preview and then you get to come back in, into your body with that experience. And also this like freshness and newness about just things getting complete that you might not even be conscious of, which is kind of what happened in my relationship. So it's like, now it's like those lessons are being brought forth in a more conscious way, which is great because from a day to day practicality point of view, that makes it usable and functional for me where before I was like, great, I'm complete. Like I, I it's funny. Cause I'll just mention it again. Like I went into that day. And if I would have like looked at a, a picture or like had a thought about her, like that's kind of where I am right now. There's still like some low level like sadness there about it. Um, like it's lingering, right? And it's, it's like dissipating as it does. I mean, I might feel there for the rest of my life for all I know, you know, just, I, I just love and care for this person that much. And it's like love is blind and I actually don't give a shit that it is. Like for all the things like logic and, you know, people are like, well, you shouldn't be talking to them. Why don't you get angry about something? Like, you know, just, I don't want any of that. I don't want to pretend like anything except for the experience that's here. I'm just like, all right, so what's the worst that's going to happen? I have to feel more like, what am I going to fucking die? You know? Um, and it's like, you know, all that stuff to me is like, well, let's change the circumstance so you can avoid the experience that's here, it's like, is that being present? Not really, you know, and I get that, right? Like I get everyone just wants to take care of you and be well. And yes, it makes sense to like take time away from each other and give yourself an opportunity to reset and stop old triggers and all that kind of stuff. It, it does. It makes sense. Right. Um, and it's like, I don't want to avoid, I don't want to run, you know, yeah. if something needs to be communicated, it needs to be communicated. If it needs to be felt, it needs to be felt. So anyway, my point is, is like, I, I really, love it because i also love the explanation of like new souls old souls what it's like when you suddenly die and you didn't plan it that's a really different experience for a soul traveling up there being killed in a car accident versus somebody who's going through like terminal illness and has time to prepare or even think about that stuff and what that does up there um what's the purpose of being up there and just like all of that and it's like if that's really what the case then this human experience is so beautiful. But like, if you read that book and all you get from me at the end is like, holy fuck, am I really listening? Because I clearly came down here for something. And am, am I actually living in the divine alignment that I that this body came here for this time? And if it just makes you even question that so that you can open up to being like, fuck, maybe I'm not listening. All right, what are opportunities that I can listen? And now you're like meditating or praying or doing whatever it is, invoking, you know, uh, so that you open up your channel to start listening, that's going to fucking change your life. Like yeah. big time going to change your life. Um, yeah. And I think that's something for me, I would offer like spending or investing time every single day, asking that question, not just with like your spirit, but even with the people in your life, be like, am I really listening today? And even checking in and being like, Hey, is there anything else that you needed to tell me today that I didn't hear? Um, Honestly, those little nuggets is like, it's everything that can completely alter your, your relationships. I actually had a conversation last week with uh, someone who's interested in joining our Ascension program. And he said this line, which I thought was really interesting. He said, what if, you know, everyone has these conversations like I'm going to live a great life and I'm going to go to heaven and I'm really excited. And even people that read things like many lives, many masters and they're all excited about, you know, getting to the spirit world and all that stuff. Like that's the prize. And he's like, what if we have it all backwards? What if this is heaven? What if this is the thing that we go up there and we like beg and we want to come back here so often to experience because this is heaven. Mm -hmm. This is the place that you get to manifest anything that your soul desires here. And I was like, that's, that's an amazing outlook, mm. you know, cause over there it's like, if, if all the books, you know, they all lead to like, you are everything and nothing when you're there, mm -hmm. you can't experience anything. You just are, you're light, you're all of it. You're none of it. You're empty. You're meaningless. You're this, you're that, like, it doesn't matter. So the only way to truly experience your power, the only way to truly experience love and 
uh, hurt and pain and forgiveness and gratitude and all that stuff is here now. And what if that's what we're here for to come here to experience this over and over. And, and what if there's nowhere else to get? I think, I think two things that really stood out for me in the book so far is like uh, the devastating experience of suicide mm. um, and how suicide is like, is also, it's like a circumvention of the lesson. Yeah. Like you're taking the opportunity away from yourself to learn it. And all it does is means like whatever you've gone through now in that pain, you're just coming back again to do that again. Yep. Like it's like a level reset. You've literally shot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Um, and, but also what it does up there, because it's not like anything is done with anger seemingly up there, but it's like, there is this feeling of like, you know, I, I Oh fuck, I messed up. Um, and then the other one is, um, damn, what was the, other experience that I thought was really profound. It escapes me right now, but uh, I'll come back to it in just a second. Uh, what was the last thing that you said? Because it was the trigger diff for me. Uh, I was saying about, oh, that this was heaven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I got it. So uh, the experience of like, um, you know, I, I had this uh, feeling of like, oh, when we become spirit, like there's this um, now the feeling of oneness and, and God is like understood. And I think there's definitely an experience of like uh, being united or at least from their, the way people express it. And granted, it's still human bodies expressing a spiritual experience. So they have to use like human, human, human things to explain something that's not very human. Um <clears throat> but it doesn't seem to me like you, they're any more connected to God up there or have a better understanding of it. It's like, it's still beyond them because mm -hmm. like their world is beyond them. It's so vast and big and infinite. And it's not like they have or seem to have an understanding of that quite yet either. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you're waiting for this like destination, you know, like this, this game we're going to play. And then there's like this destination of like heaven and spirit world. And you get up there and that, that'll be like <laughs> really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, all right, time to know to God. And it's like, no, I still don't quite get it. You know? And it's almost like we, we have an ability in this world to kind of play in various worlds through our human body. Cause we're still in the spirit or human. And there's all these different experiences you can have to unite yourself with both. Like, it's interesting. I've, I've, this is going to sound weird. I've wanted to dehumanize myself for the last few years, especially doing, since doing plant medicines and all sorts of psychedelics and, and those kind of work. And it makes you feel like you're ascending somehow above being human. And it's funny that I'm deriving so much more value and coming back into my body and actually being human. And it's like, no, duh, you idiot. Like you came here into a body to be human and you're trying to escape, like just fucking be human, you know? And it's like, fine, go, go, go get the spiritual experiences. I'm not saying uh, avoid those. And it's like, okay, well bring that back into the body now yeah. and, and, and disseminate those truths into human experience. I think that I don't want to say that's the rule or whatever, but like, at least that's what's important to me right now. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that was awesome and yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, show. Good, good uh, Monday Have It All Live session. Hope that uh, resonated for some of you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go pick up my babies mm -hmm. and have some awesome conversations. And I will uh, report back. When you pick up Aaliyah, can you go, I got my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. <laughs> <sighs> All right, man. All right. I love you. And uh, thank you guys for being here and always listening. Uh, love and honor you. Make it an incredible, incredible week. Okay, guys. Later.